Hello. I've been enjoying thinking today about a lot of things, actually, and one story from the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna was coming to mind. There's a story about him being in a carriage riding to a meeting somewhere in Calcutta, and the carriage drives by a tavern, and there's these drunkards reeling in drunkenness outside of the tavern. And Ramakrishna is a great sage, you know, uh, hangs out of the window of the carriage and throws his hands up and is waving. And he says, yes, yes, enjoy the divine bliss, enjoy the divine bliss. And uh, it really got me thinking because uh, I grew up a fundamentalist and spent a lot of years in my early 20s thinking I knew something and judging a lot of people, mostly in defensiveness of my own uh, shortcomings inside. And uh, one of the things I've really enjoyed about reading about some of the great sages in the world is seeing that that kind of behavior, that kind of worldview, only belongs to beginners uh, on the path. Ramakrishna was able to celebrate what he saw in those drunkards because of the purity inside himself. Anytime he knew that kind of bliss, for him it was because of the thought of God. And he had no problem with the drunkards finding it through drink. His only mourning for them was the fact that their bliss would end as soon as the intoxication wore off and it would leave a payment in its place. <laughs> Most notably a hangover. And, and maybe if it's a long-lasting habit, uh, some damage to their life. And that was the pain he would feel in that. He always tried to teach people to go inside to find that bliss. You know, to go inside to find that bliss. To touch the feet of, of that bliss that's within you. To know its nature. To know your nature. That He had a wonderful disciple. It was kind of a bohemian uh, guy named Girish Ghosh, who many people know. Uh, and certainly he's been one of my favorite characters. Uh, because he used to get drunk and go visit the master. <laughs> you know, that's like getting drunk and going to church. And uh, the master loved him, you know, had a great deal of fun with him. And, and Girish would abuse the master sometimes verbally, you know, when he was there and sometimes embarrass a lot of the other seekers who were in the room uh, visiting Ramakrishna. And they would ask Ramakrishna, why do you tolerate this guy? It is not clear, uh, you know, <laughs> what kind of character he is and he told them to be quiet he said you see only the only the superficial things he said girish has a wonderful faith a deep faith and i loved that habit of ramakrishna of seeing the best in people seeing the highest in everyone uh, making everyone feel welcome making everyone feel the love that he honestly and authentically had for them and i've been trying in my life to come to that point to develop those kind of eyes to develop that kind of inner purity. There's an amazing story, you know, is that, that Girish had this terrible problem with drinking. He was quite an alcoholic, actually. And uh, interestingly enough, Ramakrishna never told him to stop drinking. <laughs> when Girish asked him for help, you know, uh, Ramakrishna told him, he said, see, every time you take that glass of wine, hold it up first to the Divine Mother and thank her for the bliss that you think you're getting from it. You know, he wanted to make Girish's vice remind Girish of the love of the beloved, the love of God, the joy of God, knowledge of knowing our nature. And in the end, Girish, Girish became a, a saint, you know, gave up those habits. I don't know if he realized God or not, but uh, nonetheless, he became a great teacher and a very highly respected uh, seeker of God. And... Uh, you know, a lot of times we run around telling people the obvious. Oh, you need to stop drinking. Oh, you shouldn't act that way. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Uh, that's not really the message. The message is think of love always. Think of the divine in yourself always. Find your joy in the light of being, in the light of giving, the light of caring always. The rest will take care of itself. Now, of course, your journey will be much quicker if you spend some effort, you know, cleaning up along the way. That was something Swami Prabhupada taught me many years ago, my first year in the monastery. I made quite a mistake 
one time and was significantly hurt by it inside. And I t was telling Swami Prabhutananda about it, that I had done this particular deed that I was feeling horrible about. And I was, he made me tell him in detail three times about what I had done. And uh, I won't, I won't, <laughs> I won't share those details, but uh, I was broken and I was really crying quite hard in front of him. And then he yelled at me, but what he yelled was beautiful. He said, why are you crying? You are a child of the mother. Your honesty has saved you. He said, for worldly people, it is enough for them to let these things fall off as they do. But you are a monk. And through your practice, through your sadhana, you must burn these worldly desires out of yourself. Now go to the shrine and enjoy mother. That was one of my first teachings with Swami Prabhupada and one that has and is still changing my life. That notion that God is here now, this moment, is divine and beloved, and I'm as close to him as I'll ever be. And that, uh, that it's a matter of learning uh, and growing as we go. Yesterday in my talk about the gem, someone commented, oh, love is everywhere. It does not, there is no gem. There is no subject object. And that's true. And I, and I hope that that person knows that from his own experience and not from just the words of somebody else. Repeating other people's words are very easy. Uh, the quest to have these experiences and this knowledge within ourselves is a difficult one, and one that requires a very sincere and dear renunciation of the lesser things that we come to know our lesser things and moving forward. It's starting to rain out here, so my time is getting short. But I so enjoy talking about these things and finally having a venue to share them uh, after so many years in the monastery. And uh, I'm really touched that there's people that are, in, that are interested uh, and really glad to be making new friends and new contacts along these lines. I encourage you, look for these spiritual things. They're kind of out of vogue, certainly renunciations out of vogue. <laughs> But, you know, go against the grain, be, uh, <laughs> be uncool, as it were, and uh, t try these truths, you know, find your path. You can start anywhere, start where you are right now. Uh, you know, all paths lead to God in the end. Uh, there's no right one or wrong one. If you sincerely are trying to find your way to the grocery store, Ramakrishna says, go out the door and start and just ask people along the way. If you're sincere and earnest, eventually you'll get to the grocery store. You'll find the path. So that's the thing. If you don't know where to start, just sit and be quiet until you do. <laughs> that's all. Anyway, I hope our lives are blessed, that your life is blessed, that your day is beautiful, and uh, that one day we can sit face to face and talk about these things in great joy maybe even experience some of that divine bliss.